For too many years, families of children with devastating illnesses have felt helpless as they watch their child suffer. Today, they're taking matters into their own hands and finally finding relief, treating their child with cannabis. These are their stories. All right, so Josh, when it comes to culture, because um, I hear that term a lot, and they, sometimes I think it's being overused or misunderstood, because um, culture could be different things in different companies, but what is the most common theme when it comes to culture that you see across the board? Is it we want you hardworking, we want you to be able to fit in, uh, just show up on time? You know, what is like the, cultural, like the common theme when it comes, especially in this industry, when it comes to culture? Well, that's a, it's an interesting question. Culture, uh, as I see it from a staffing professionals, are all individual based on uh, the type of company. Culture is based on beliefs and the values of the organization. Mm-hmm. And those beliefs and values need to coincide with what the candidates believe. And, uh, and part of that also is uh, the behaviors of the team. Now, you hope with any organization that you join that the values and belief systems are all aligned. But with any organization, that's a, that's a, that's a culture is probably the toughest thing to work on within an organization. You could be functional and have the best product. You have the, could have a, a very highly profitable uh, and fast-moving organization. But if that belief system is not unified throughout the organization, it becomes harder to, to produce. And what we find out is that culture is not something that you can check a box on, uh, on an application and say, yep, they, mm-hmm. they, they definitely do well together. You know, this candidate and this client are wonderful. It's once they're in the party. And when they're there, then you can tell, are they the kids that are in the side, you know, of the sandbox or are they playing with everyone in the sandbox? And so this is a little bit based on knowledge of people, which when the staffing industry, you learn a lot about people. And trust me, if uh, you know, I could sit down with you, you know, and, and I could tell you a little bit about yourself that you may not know. But this is because of 20 years of doing this. Mm. And so we provide this type of, same type of structure and understanding with our, with our process, part of the BAT process. And, um, you know, this is really where sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Makes a lot of sense. How, did you, how do you scout for talent? Well, we have, we have a two-pronged approach. One pr- prong is, is our marketing and branding. You know, we've been doing this for two years to this point. People know us in the industry. Uh, They refer their friends to the industry. And secondly is that we are always, always connecting, okay? Uh, Whether it's podcast individuals, whether it's writing articles, whether it's providing value through some of the social media and trying to get individuals that are interested in their next step. If they're not, we will take a we'll take a look at you know competitors, maybe the competitors of our clients that are looking, um, and reach out to some of the individuals there to see, hey, are you interested in a new type of opportunity? And it really depends on how happy people are. Uh, and being that this is a new and exciting and fast moving industry, the companies with an excellent leadership team uh, are going to be able to hold on to their. Yeah, employees, the ones that have you know, first time in business, don't know how to treat employees, you know, are really disorganized, uh, may have a name that you know of, but if they're unable to really um, stand by their employees and provide that training and provide that hand holding as leaders should do, those are the individuals that will be open to a move. Now, in, in the news recently, um, I, I don't know if you've come across uh, MedMen. Yes. Recently, they were denied a, I guess they were denied an agreement, or I forgot what it was they were denied, but they were not able to open up a dispensary in a particular um, location in California. And they stated one of the reasons was that the people, the staffing that they had, the new executives that they've um, hired, have no cannabis-related experience. All of them are basically from, I guess you would say, mainstream employment, uh, you know, whether they were in marketing, whether they were in retail or sales, but nothing 
related to um, cannabis, and that hurt them. Mm-hmm. Have you come across situations like that where it's like, okay, we got to have a balance that we really would like to have? Because I know you mentioned that you that you do place people, you know, fresh who Without. are not in the industry, but where does the balance come in in a sense like that? Well, that really depends on the licensing procedures with the state. Being all from a different industry in different states is 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 some sometimes celebrated. But maybe in in, in uh, California, it may be a little bit different uh, of that. So I can't really comment on on that particular question exactly. Okay. Uh, so with the current market as it is, because in the news has been that you know the cannabis and hemp industry has been really been booming, business has been picking up despite everything else that's been going on. Um, have you guys um, seen that as like? actual fact that you guys have been really been uh, busy placing people there's been a, a definitely uptick uh, since COVID you know once COVID hit everything really stopped and slowed down significantly so that's hurt everyone in the industry uh, but now since people are kind of getting used to this new type of norm uh, they know business has to proceed you know we need people um, so they are uh, opening themselves up at this point, and they're willing to to push forward, uh, which is it's great. You, know, you really think about it. You know, you can stall for so long, but uh, you know, it's it's a it's, it's wonderful that uh, you know, cannabis uh, has been a medical necessity uh, for uh, the CDC guidelines. Um, that has helped. You know, at least keep. People employed and revenue coming in, uh, and now some of the other uh, verticals in the cannabis and hemp industry are are fourth quarter coming up. So people need people need to, to finish strong. You got a lot of holidays. You got the Thanksgiving, and you have uh, Christmas, and Hanukkah, and everything else coming up by. So this is typically a big. Uh, a big quarter for retail, and hence that's why there's a big need uh, that's uh, for for new talent coming in. Okay, well, like what, what what has been a challenge when it comes to placing for you guys? Like, what's the biggest challenge? Is not having the right people, or having too many people to fill a position? I think part of it, uh, the biggest challenge is is having organizations realize the value of a staffing organization because there's so many new companies when you sometimes and i'm saying this and there's sex there's sections of of new companies there's the organizations that are very well funded have an incredible leadership team that understand the value of professional services um and then there's organizations that you know, maybe they got a license to grow, uh, and they've never done this before. And, you know, now they're CEO and before they're you know, not even close to it, maybe at that level. And so some of them, uh, just don't understand the pure value because they have to obviously pay us uh, on our, our fees. But if you start breaking up that lot time and also the ability to make mistakes, uh, as a non-professional, that's where there's issues because they'll make the wrong hire. Now, I put this at this um, this is an example. You can always build your own kitchen. You can go to Home Depot, and build your entire kitchen. Might take you a long time, and you may be happy with it, and you may not be happy with it. But sometimes you have to go to the professionals. You got to go to your your kitchen company that actually does this gets it done fast and right. And that's how we come in. You know, so when you have we have the risk of making a wrong hire, you know, that's going to that's going to be a sevenfold mistake on the company. And therefore this is a big, big push to get people to understand the value of utilizing a professional organization because we really have top, top quality uh, candidates. Now, uh, you're looking at the salaries. Are they comparable to the main market versus a cannabis and hemp market? Uh, are the salaries comparable in a sense like, okay, yeah, it's very competitive? That, you know, and I've heard this, this comment uh, many times, but I do see, especially with the C-levels, uh, if they're well-funded, 
they're really on the same basis of your traditional C levels at the same revenue. The ability for sales, uh, I see maybe a little lower, but it's bigger back end. So you'll be able to make that that money on the back end, and that's based on productivity. But otherwise, I don't see a huge differentiation in in standard of, of businesses or industries versus the cannabis or hemp. Uh, I think a number of years ago, there was a major difference, but now it's becoming more competitive. So people are moving for money, people moving for, for brands, uh, and people are dying to get into this industry. Uh, so I see a very, lot of similarities on the, the salary basis. Now, are you also working with like most recent college graduates or are you visiting college campuses? No, we, we fo- since we focus on really your lower level managers all the way to C level, we're dealing with a higher level professional uh, looking to a get into the industry or switching an, or uh, a company. You know, a lot of the uh, beginner roles, you know, maybe as simple as being a cultivator or a trimmer, or just you know entry level sales, but organizations uh, typically don't utilize staffing companies for these lower lower end positions. Understood. Understood. Now, do you normally work with the HR department or are you actually working directly with the CEO of the companies or the, chief, or the COOs of companies when it comes to hiring and negotiating? It depends on the size of the organization. So much larger organizations that actually afford an HR director will working directly with HR. Uh, otherwise, it is typically the uh, C-level mostly the COO or C, uh, CEO uh, of an organization. Someone that can make decisions, they don't have the capability of yet of, of having a whole HR department. Uh, but some of our larger clients, yeah, we deal directly with the HR department. When you're working directly with a CEO, don't, don't you find that challenging sometimes because they're keeping their focus? Because they're looking at the overall company and trying to keep that going. And then for them to take the time out to try to figure out, like, okay, what kind of person do I want to hire? You know, they may have this wish list versus what they can actually, ha- what they actually need. Well, you know, that's a, a great, great question. And it's very true. And the fact is that when you hire a professional staffing organization like Calix Staffing, we are able to guide the C-levels that may not have this type of experience into what they may need you know, what type of quality uh, and, and type of responsibilities uh, that they may need to push their organization further. Because you're right, some of the C-levels don't really understand too much about it. So since we've been in it and been doing it, uh, we can give some direction uh, of really what they're looking for. And also based on bus- what their budget is. That's a, that's a, that's a, a big concept as, as well. Yeah, that's true. That's, I can, I can and imagine so that. we provide that consult for for the C levels that may need a little bit more hand holding. Yes, that was the word I was going to use, but <laughs> since you said that, the hand holding. So, but my last question now before you go, what do you what's your outlook when it comes to employment with the industry? Do you see it continuing to grow up, or do you think it's going to flatline, or do you think it's going to go down? Now, this this type of industry uh, is going to continue to grow as more states open up their markets, uh, as the uh, opportunity for federal illegal uh, starts to get closer, and as really the public sentiment about cannabis and hemp uh, really starts, people really start to understand it. You know, it, it's been this type of stepchild of of a medicine for such a long time, and thank God we're, we're at the point of taking it off the list of uh, highly uh, addictive drugs. So with all this understanding in the marketplace, this is going to be commonplace. This is going to be like going and picking up a case of beer yeah. or whatever the deal. You know, there's a little comfort value. There's probably going to be some government controls on this. It'll be their medicinal market. So with all these elements here, it's just going to be a a farming stock, and that's really what it is. Uh, And it's up to us as adults to make sure that, you know, the message is probably given to our kids about the use of cannabis. And uh, and this is, takes obviously time and having people understand that, but just kind of similar to, to that of, of what I look at as alcohol. But uh, this is something that's going to continue to grow 
because as new states as states open this up, as the federal government opens it up, companies are going to start growing. And just like the common industry of, of tech and, and and any other industry, staffing companies have been around for you know hundreds of years, and they need professionals like Calix Staffing to have them understand and navigate the can uh, the cannabis as well as the candidate uh, environment. Uh, so they can make better choices and they can make fast choices with confidence. And that's really where staffing organizations provide a tremendous amount of value uh, in what we do. Great. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the industry as well grow. Um, definitely uh, looking forward to like new young minds also hopefully tapping into the industry and hope, taking it to the next level. And thankfully, um, companies like yourself are around, too, to help bridge that gap because I know it could be challenging for them to find ideal people because I've spoken to a number of people who you know who own companies, and they said that, you know the challenge for some of them was to find quality people, people who really want to work, you know, people who don't ju- just indulge but indulge after work, not during work while you're trying to get things done, you know? Because <laughs> I know you've probably come across situations like that. Well, you know, it's, it's, that's about qualification, how you're, you're, you're looking for that. You know, just like if you're going to hire someone to work at Constellation, mm-hmm. you know, the largest liquor brand uh, or company in, in, the, in the world, or at least one of them. And just because you, you work for a liquor company doesn't mean you can get <laughs> drunk uh, on, on, dur- during during office t- time. So, you know, there's a time and place for that. Yeah. And, you know, as we start going into more legitimate marketplace, okay, people change. People understand. You know, you do have a lot of the black market uh, individuals that, you know, are starting companies or not starting, maybe have a different type of culture as we talked about earlier yeah. uh, in their companies, but then you're going to have your uh, strong management companies uh, that will definitely not allow this. And it shouldn't be, yeah. it shouldn't be any, any partaking uh, during you know business or, or what have you. So um, this is how we legitimize the industry. Mm-hmm. And that's so important for everyone to get on board. And that's why, you know, you and I are both here supporting the industry and seeing a lot of, of benefits uh, to uh, the world. Yeah, unless they're using it medicinally, they, yeah, it shouldn't be just recreational. It should be medicinally only if you're going to be at work. But I really appreciate your time, and I thank you for coming on um, and sharing that. Now, if people wanted to get in touch with you, you know, send their resume, how would they get in touch? Best way is to go to our website, which is Calix Staffing, mm-hmm. which is C A L Y X staffing.com and they can head right there and fill out uh, the application, send us right to it and our team will be in, in touch uh, with them. Uh, and that's probably the best way to do it. And there's also a lot of articles and other podcasts on that as well awesome. uh, to help people understand, um, you know, how do you get into the industry? What do I need to do? Uh, we we do get a lot of those questions of saying, hey, I'm transferring to the cannabis industry. How do I do it? Mm. You know, well, what, 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 and so this is where we're able to kind of give some insight uh, to that. Um, and that's a, a very important part because, again, this is not a scary industry. This is a new industry. It's an exciting industry. That's yeah, true. And um, just like the internet time, uh, it was a new, everything was on online. And for us at that time, was rather new. Now, it's the same type of situation. If you have good work ethic and you're productive and you know exactly what your skill sets are and uh, you take the industry seriously, then you will have uh, a, a great career path in this industry. True, true. I'm going to have to send you my resume then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> send away. I will. Thanks again, Josh. I really appreciate your great. time. Have a great day. I appreciate Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate uh, both your times. Thank you. Um, And uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me any which way you need to. Definitely. definitely. We'll be in touch and do a follow-up as we go into 2021. Yeah, thank you so much for for coming on. Perfect. All right, and have a great day. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 